I am a terrible test taker. I do not do well when you sit me down with a sheet of paper and ask me multiple choice questions. I don't do it. True, false questions. I always second guess myself. And so the big question that I have when I take a test is, what if it's this answer or what if it's that answer? Even if I study all week long, which I never did, <laughs> the answer I could never quite figure it out. I would always second guess myself. Now, what if is one of the greatest questions of all time in our lives, isn't it? What if I would have done this? Or what if I would have done that? Or what if, you know, you could what if your life away if you wanted? And so the question that we're going to ask today is, what if? Because as Christians, we all know that behind all of these what if questions, we serve a sovereign God, a sovereign God who's never stopped working out his perfect plan for us. And we know that nothing in our lives is an accident, right? And that in good times and in bad times, we all know that God is always in control. So this should give us peace and it should give us hope, but there are good and helpful ways to use that what-if question. They can be used to remind us of God's care for us in the what-ifs, right? And in Psalm 124, we're going to be in Psalm 124 today, the psalmist considers what would have been if God had not rescued his people. What would life look like if God wasn't there? So there's a sense in which this psalm starts with the what-if question, but behind the question we're going to look is a declaration, and it's a declaration of faith, and it's a declaration of trust in God. And so the psalm is a call to praise. It's a call to trust God who has saved his people and who continues to be their help. So we are going to look at Psalm 124. We're going to read it all the way through. It's only eight verses. Psalm 124, it starts out with our question. If, right? If the Lord had not been on our side. So what if the Lord had not been our, on our side? Let Israel say. And then he asks it again. He says it again. Well, what if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood, it would have engulfed us. The torrent, it would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Now, he could have just stopped right there, and it would have been the most negative psalm ever. What if God had never been with us? Well, we all would have burnt and died. But there's another verse, verse 6. Verse 6 says, Praise be to the Lord. Amen who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Verse 7, we have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Amen? We escaped it. Verse 8, it says, our help and our hope is in the name of the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Amen? So in these first two verses, this psalmist, he makes an important declaration about God. He asked the what if question. Have you ever asked the what if question? What if God is not here? Have you ever asked it? I've asked it. Sometimes in my life, it, it seemed like God is just not there. What, where is he? What if he's really not there? What if this whole thing is just a scam, a sham? Well, the psalmist, he makes a declaration here, and here's what he says about God. He says, God is on our side. Amen? God is on our side. Do you know how many people in the world say that God is always against us? God is always against us. He's got nothing for us. He is a wrathful God. He doesn't want to be on our side. He's not here. I say, no, God is always on our side. This is the theme 
of this, of this particular psalm is that God is on our side. He's not against his people. He's for us. You remember in creation, on the sixth day, he did something really cool, and he made people, right? He said, let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created them. Man and woman, he created them. If God is against us, why did he make us? Right? God is on our side. He's not distant. He's not far away. He's right here with us. He comes along with us. He helps us face all of our challenges in life. And so then what happens in the rest of the psalm is he shows these three categories, and he makes them pretty vague about where God is present on the side of his people. God is always in our side, and here's why. What if he's not, though, right? And so here's the list. So first, God saves his people from their enemies. He saves us from all other humans. And then the psalmist references a time in Israel's past when other nations were against Israel, and yet God still saved them. There are many other times in Scripture where we see God always being on the Israelite side. But the point remains that when it seems as if the entire world is against us, when it seems like the entire world has opposed us, we can always take comfort and take refuge in knowing that God is always on our side. He's always got our best interest in mind. He always knows what's going on. You can what if your question of the day, whatever the what if question of the day is, but God already knows the answer. He knows what you're going to pick. He's always on your side, and he's going to help you follow it through to the end. Amen, pastor. Amen. He is sovereign over every aspect of the earth's systems. He knows everything that's going to happen because he is the one who made it. He made all things. Look at all six days of the stuff that he created, right? He created everything that we could see. He created the heavens and the earth. He knows when all of the different things are going to happen. And he, we can all take comfort in knowing and we could worship him for the creative power of God. He knows when everything is going to happen. God is the maker of the heavens and the earth, and believers have the privilege of intimately knowing the one who helps them. He's not just some abstract thing. He's not just God. He's God. He is very real. He is very present in all of our daily lives. And so this psalm, it declares that our help is found in one thing, in one thing alone, the name of the Lord, God, Yahweh, right? How many times have we heard God's name in vain? And somebody says it, and when, it, when people say it, I, I try and like do one of these, you know? And I'm like, all right, I know I heard it, and I know I could speak out, but right, psalms, what the Psalms also say that in your anger you do not sin, right? You just like search your heart, you be silent about it. But then I hear God's name. God is my father, right? If anybody speaks ill of your humanly father, what do you do? Right? Or your mother, when I hear my heavenly Father's name in vain, you're speaking of him negatively. You, you don't even know him probably. I do one of these because I got to say, nope, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it, but you just spoke of my heavenly Father, and that makes me angry. It's okay to be angry though, right? It's okay to be angry at the right things, but that just... He is God. And our help is found in that name alone, God. It extends not only to enemies and natural disasters, but to the threat of wild animals, all creatures everywhere. 
So here is what the psalm asks. It asks, what if God is not on our side? And it tells us what's going to happen if God is not on our side, or more specifically, what I wanted to know through this psalm is where exactly would we be right now if God was not on our side? Let's say he doesn't exist. Verse 3, our enemies would have swallowed us alive. So we would be dead. Our enemy would have washed us away. We would have been dead. You're right. Our enemy would have drowned us. Three times, he says, if God was not on our side, we would be dead. But God is on our side. Therefore, we are not dead, but very much alive. Kind of a little bit out there, but that's all right. You see... Here, wait, 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 uh, there, there's more in here, because God's got some good stuff in Scripture. So John chapter 15 and verse 5, this is amazing, amazing, and, and I won't try and go off too far. John chapter 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches, right? If a man remains in me, and I in him, I will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. He talks about this amazing vine of branches, And all of these different branches cling to the root, which is the vine, right? Everything comes from the source, from the vine. And we are all the branches. If there are no branches, there is no vine, right? I take that back. There is always a vine. I said that wrong. There is always a vine. But sometimes there's not as many branches as we'd like to have, right? And that is where we come into play and create more branches for the vine. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3, it says this. It says, If anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. This, this is in the scripture, right? Here's what Paul says. He says, If anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So what's that mean? It it means if you, can, if you think that you can navigate life successfully without God, you're deceiving yourself. That's what it says. Now, here's what you're going to say. I know plenty of people who've gotten out. Uh, I've, I've known plenty of people who have gotten along in life without God. And I want to say, really? Are you sure? that that person is 100% completely happy. One of the things that I was thinking of a couple weeks ago was why do people wake up in the morning? Why do you wake up in the morning? What is your purpose for the day? Do you want to make an American dollar? Because they'll show you how to spend it. Right? A lot of commercials show you how to spend it. Do you wake up just because it's the morning time and the sun came up and you're like, woohoo, it's another day. I'm still alive and breathing and kicking. Sometimes. Or do you wake up thinking, I get one more day to serve the Lord. I get one more day on this earth to create more branches to the vine to navigate my life with God, to run this race, to win the prize, to see more people in heaven as it should be. Who gave you your life? Who showers you with blessings every day? All right, we're going to work on this, okay? We got to go back to Genesis, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. Right, right, right. Sixth day. God created man in his own image. In his own image, he created man. And man, man and woman, he created him, right? Who gave you life? Who showers you with blessings every day? Are you going to take credit for all those things? No. Who are we going to give it to? God. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're not excited to be here today. I'm so excited to be here today. We're, we're like, we are here to worship God. Here's this old song, old song that, sung, that is sung to God. It goes like this. Here we go. Without you, it's hard to explain. 
You could say, I'm like a cloud without rain. Or a raging forest fire without a flame. Without you, I know I'm to blame. Without you, it's all in vain. We do everything because of God. First Corinthians says it this way about God. He says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. He never tells you when he gives you the way out, though, does he? He doesn't even tell you how it's going to happen or where it's going to happen. He says, and I quote, he will provide a way out. When you are struggling with life, when you are going through the burdens of everything that's happening, when you feel like life is just ripping you apart, 1 Corinthians says when you are tempted, when you have something going on in your life, when you are not completely focused on God, he will provide a way out. And through the storm, we should all pray. We should always be thinking about what is God going to help us with. He provides a way out. He breaks the snare, as Psalm says it, right? He breaks the snare, and he lets us escape. Now, you might think you're trapped in sin. And I learned this this past year. You might think that sin is an actual trap. You might think that you don't have a way out. You might think that you can't escape, but it's not true. Sin is not a trap. God always gives you a way out. God always gives you a way to escape. He breaks the snare so that you can escape. And so what else can you do? You can apply this whole mentality about God to your salvation. Salvation is a $150 word that just means you believe in God. The Apostle Paul, he says it in in 2 Timothy. He writes to Timothy and he says that they will all come to their senses and they will escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. You see, when we don't believe in God, Satan has us trapped. Satan has us in this temptation, this trap of sin, this trap by the devil. And Jesus, what he did is he came along and he sprung that trap. Amen? He broke the snare. He set us all free. And we don't have to worry about being trapped anymore. And so here's the good news about Psalm 124. Here's the good news about God. Is that that what if question, that what if God wasn't there, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. God is always with us right here. You might think you've been trapped in sin for life, that you can't find a way out. In fact, TV and social media and all these doctors are going to tell you that you might be trapped in sin for life. It's who you are. Can I tell you that's not true? Can I tell you that's not true? God makes a way when there is no way, right? You might have died without Christ and gone to an eternity in hell, but that didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen is because of God. God makes all the difference. God helps us against all odds. And so the last thing in this psalm that that they call us to do is give praise to God for what he's done. To call on the name of the Lord. How do you acknowledge your complete dependence on God? Well, first of all, you affirm that the the difference that God has made in your life, you tell people, I am a Christian. He changed my life. And then we praise God for his protection and deliverance in our life. Once we affirm the the difference that God makes, once we praise God for his protection, we tell other people and we help them out too. We don't want to see people get trapped, do we? You see, look at verse 8 again. Psalm 124 and verse 8. When we need help, When we need help in any difference in our lives, whatever it might be, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, we've heard this verse before, haven't we? We've already talked about it. 
It's in Psalm number 121. And what does it say? It says, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If something is repeated in scripture, that means that it's important. Now we mentioned that in the beginning of this series, we're going to see the maker of heaven and earth show up several times. It's, it shows up three times in these Psalms. It, so, it shows up at the beginning in Psalm 121. It shows up in the middle in Psalm 124. And it shows up at the end in Psalm 134. Now in Psalm 121, here's what's cool. In Psalm 121, when we talk about the creator of heaven and earth, the emphasis fell on God as the maker of heaven and earth. But in verse 8 here, in the, in the middle of it, the emphasis falls on the name of the Lord. We're progressing, right? And then the name of the Lord here is Yahweh. Yahweh means God's covenant name. It's God's covenant name. It speaks of his character. It speaks of, speaks of God's uh, faithfulness, of his presence, of his power, of his attributes. Now contrast this with me for a minute because it's interesting. The name of the Lord here in verse 8 with men back in verse 2 of this particular psalm that we're talking about today in 120 and 124. Do you see what happened here? The psalmist is putting man versus God. Man is against God. Let me ask you a question. Who's going to win? God is. Oh, God is. God's going to win. He is the maker of heaven and earth. There is no man who is ever going to defeat my God. And I don't care how you say it. He's still going to win. It's interesting, though. Trace the progression of this psalm. You're going to notice that first the psalmist encourages all of Israel to affirm the difference that God makes, right? Then the psalmist gives praise to God for his protection and deliverance. And then he testifies that the Lord is the one who helped them. And so the psalm, it moves from an, from an affirmation of praise to a testimony. He's telling us to tell our story. Now, please don't go up to somebody and say, I just love God so much. He is so a part of my life. Will you speak with affirmation? Will you speak with conviction and power? Will you speak knowing that you serve a risen Savior? Will you speak knowing that his name is God, our Father, the maker of the heaven and earth? When we testify about him, we should be happy to say it. We should never be ashamed. And so what a difference God makes in all of our lives. The Lord had not been on our side. If the Lord had not been on, on our side, we would have been swept away, right? If the Lord had not been on our side, we would have perished. If the Lord would have not been on our side, we would have been trapped. But I can tell you this this morning, and I can testify to you that everything, everything good in my life has come from God. He has blessed me. He has given me a great family. He has given me a wonderful house that has air conditioning and heat. He has given me food that I can eat every single day, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> he has given me friends. He has given me acquaintances. He has given me life that I get to breathe in and out each and every single day. And I can assure you that I cannot live this life alone. I can't do it without God. He is my father. He is my creator. He is my helper. He is my sustainer. 
He is my hope for the rest of the world. And it is my prayer that as we continue to serve our Lord, that we could share that with the people around us, with our communities, with the state, with our nation, and with the world. We have an obligation to do it. Let's remember who he is today. Father, we lift your name on high. Father, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise. Father, we ask that you continue to share your power and your might with us. I ask, Father, that you continue to create this strength inside of us that we might be able to go out and share this hope that we have with others. Father, I pray that those of us who might feel like we might be trapped in this life of sin, Father, that that we can understand that you always give us a way out. I pray, Father, that you show it. I pray, Father, that you share it with us. I pray, Father, that you give us just a peace and a comfort during the times where we might struggle with whatever it might be in our daily living. Father, I thank you for creating all of these things around us. And I pray that you can continue to be by our side, that you will be by our side, and that you can just help us out as we walk our regular lives. We thank you so much for sending your son to help us escape from this life of sin. And it's in his name I want to pray all of these things. Amen.